Ow. That's me. Did you ever want to be a new you? Yeah. All the time. Every day. Okay. Well, this is the episode for you then. Is it though? <laughs> it's about being a new me. Uh, yeah. Except in your case, I think it would be a little bit different. It would be. You'd be like, well, let me get rid of my brain. <laughs> That'd be cool. Make maybe, it so it doesn't hurt all the time. Maybe you have like two extra inches of height. Nah, nah, not allowed. Mm, rude. You don't want to push your butt, push your, push your luck. <laughs> push my butt. <laughs> uh, hello, welcome to this week's episode of Jared and Al Watch Love Live. It is episode number eighteen. I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Ladium. Hello. And we are discussing season two, episode number five. It's called, as you probably would have already expected, a new me. A new me. A new me. A new me. Uh, Muse is all split up, not because of something that happened, but because the second years are on a school trip. They went to Okinawa. They went to Okinawa. And they're all ready to go hit the beach, have some fun, except that's not what's happening. It rains. It rains, it pours, there's a storm coming through, and they don't get to do much of anything. Honk has a real storm coming. Her her powers don't work here. It's true. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But for now, uh, the rest of Muse, the third and first years, have to figure out what they're going to do because they have a fashion event go they're performing at and being a part of this weekend. So they have to practice so that when the second years come back that they can just like jump right in. Yep. And they got to figure out who's going to be the temporary stand-in leader for Muse while the second years are gone. This is such a dumb choice. It's so arbitrary. It's very bizarre. Yeah. So they're like, all right, well, we got to come up with a leader. And then it's got to Ren being like, me? <laughs> and they're all like, yeah, we chose you to be the leader. Why did you choose me to be the leader? Well, we chose you to be the leader. No one ever says, this is why we chose you to be the leader. It's all just, nope. well, we chose you to be the leader. <laughs> yep. Like, there's so many other people I would have picked before Ren as the leader. Like, my my first thought would be to go either Ellie or Nico. Right. But they, they basically kind of excused Ellie and Nozomi because they're like, well, we're filling in for the student council while Hanukkah's away. Right. So we can't really juggle both of those. Nico, you would have figured, been like, as classic Nico, well, I guess I'll do I it. I guess I'll do it. But instead, she's like, yeah, we picked you. Yeah, I. that's not a Nico thing to do. It's very weird. It's very out of character. Like all of this is, is just basically set up just to get to where they want to go with the story, mm-hmm. and it's not really a good setup. <laughs> no, it's it's a bizarre situation, and I think that they could have handled it much better. And how they actually set, like I don't think the story itself is a bad thing to do. No, but I, th- I think the lead up to it is just like uh, that makes no sense whatsoever. Like, what if you just did something like, well, like, hey, Hanukkah before she goes is like, well, the. Ellie and Nozomi are going to help with the student council and everything. Nico is going to do something else or whatever. Uh, one of you first years has to step up and basically kind of lead things for the meantime. Uh, Ren, congratulations. You're in charge. All right, bye. Like, I feel like that would be more of an explanation than just the other first and third years were just like, yeah, we picked you. Yeah. LOL. And, like, zero explanation on why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. Rin is basically a, is like, I don't understand why you're picking me. I don't feel confident in doing this. This does not feel right. Uh, she basically just, like, kind of feels out of her element the entire time. Like, she doesn't feel herself having to, like, kind of lead everyone. She doesn't feel confident in herself to be doing all this, making sure everyone's in step and everything. And pretty quickly, everyone kind of, like, picks up on it. And she's like, yeah, I don't... I." Nope, not gonna be the leader. Nope, definitely doesn't shouldn't be me. I can't do this. Not feminine enough. That basically becomes the kind of the crux of the story for this episode. Is that like Ren is very presented as like the tomboy of the group and everything. So she feels like, well, if I'm the center, I have to be very feminine because I'm an idol and everything, and that's how idols look and all that. I don't have the traditional idol look. I shouldn't be the one out out front. You know, She's standing like, in front of everyone. Be Kanayo. It should be like Haneo or it should be Maki or literally anyone else but me. <laughs> Which, like, we've been, 
we've gotten hints that this was a situation with her before. Mm-hmm. But like this is where it like really gets worked out a bit. Yeah, Haneo basically kind of explains uh, like when Ren was younger, a lot of like she would try and dress more girly and everything and basically get made fun of for it because, you know, she doesn't have the the quote unquote traditional feminine looks and everything. She has short hair and all that. So like when she would wear skirts and all this, the boys would be like, oh, you wear skirts for you weirdo. (laughs) And eventually, you know, that that builds up and it builds up to where it becomes a complex for you. Yeah, and that's where Ren is right now. Where she's like, I can't wear any of this feminine stuff because that's that's not how I am. I, can't, you know, I'm I'm not the kind of person who would wear that. I don't have the look to wear that. Like that's not me. I guess it should be mentioned that like the leader outfit is like a very fluffy like wedding dress s type outfit. Yes, which that kind of come, becomes a big thing where she's just like, I definitely can't do that. But they're like, Oh, you can do it. And she's like. Uh, uh, uh. Nope. Uh, uh, we go back to Hanukkah's group where this is where we see that they are stranded because of bad weather and everything. They play cards. Umi is very bad at telling people what cards that she wants to pick. She wants them to pick, so she loses every time. Feel that. And just keeps getting mad and mad. <laughs> Super feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of the group eventually calls Hanukkah about what's happening, and she's like, well, I thought Rin would be good for the job. This is a uh, hmm. This is kind of a pickle. I guess we'll give it to Hanayo. I don't know. Shrug shoulders. And I guess one thing that like I, I think you probably mentioned, but I'm gonna reiterate is that like the plan is that the second years will be back in time for Hanukkah to take her role in the like lead outfit. Right. But eventually, it gets to the point where like, hey, the the weather is bad enough where we have to postpone going back Mm -hmm. so then it becomes the the first and third years having to do this this event by themselves and that kind of that puts a little bit more stress onto ren that's like oh well i have to be the 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 person in front then and that really that's like the tipping point of pushing her over the edge where she she really is just like adamant like i can't do this can't do this and then they basically they put haneo in as a substitution they're like, well, Hanayo's close to Hanukkah's size anyway, so like mm. we don't have to adjust it that much. It, it's okay. They basically do a fitting for her and put her in the dress and everything. And everyone's like, oh, yay, 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 yay. And Ren's just like, oh, let's go do practice. Yay, because I can be my normal self because I don't have to have to be the leader anymore. Yay. yay. Yeah. yeah. But she looks over her shoulder and, and looks very sad for a second. And Hanayo sees it. Like, Why can't I wear the dress? <laughs> Uh, eventually, Hanayo talks to Hanukkah about everything, about what's going on with Ren and all of that, and they basically formulate a plan, a secret plan. <laughs> so we get to the day of the event. Everyone's uh, getting ready and everything. They're like, oh, hey, Ren, here's your, here's where you're going to get dressed and everything. And like, she's like, oh, okay. Hey, wait a minute. That's not my outfit. <laughs> That's not my outfit. <laughs> what's going on here? And they're like, yeah, just kidding. You're going to wear it. You're going to wear the dress. You're going to be the dress wearer. And then they're like, you're cute. You should wear it. <laughs> Just yell at you until you wear it. <laughs> so that seems, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then everything goes over well. Yep. Everything goes fine. She's wearing this wedding dress. They're all dressed like as butlers mm-hmm. or grooms. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. Uh, And they perform a song. Call they do. Love wing bell. Yep. Uh, and then they come back to practice and Ren's now wearing a skirt because she feels okay wearing more. She can wear feminine outfits. stuff now. Yeah. So she basically gets over her complex. Yeah. Yay. Pretty much. That's the episode. That is, that's basically the episode. Um, I assume there's going to be trivia that talks about this in Hanamaru, right? It doesn't actually. But yeah, this wow. is um the impetus in sunshine uh episode four four i want to say where it's the it's the second year is trying to get ruby and hanamaro to join and hanamaro's like no i can't do this i'm not supposed to be Mm -hmm. an idol i i I don't i don't fit the role i don't look like an idol and ruby's like she didn't think she could be an idol either and look at her 
There's like there's like this magazine spread that like talks about the 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 event they did with Ren and everything, and Han or Hanamaru basically keeps going back to that, and that's kind of the impetus of how she eventually is able to join. Um, which is basically what you didn't know about until we watched this episode. Of like, why was that a a thing? Why was that like a callback specifically? Yeah, and I still don't know that it really fits all that well. Like Hanamaru didn't feel like she would be a good idol for different reasons, mm-hmm. but. Um, also, I, I'm not sure why I voiced Ruby as like a super sassy girl of like, she could do it. Why can't you? Look at this. Biggie. Biggie. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I get it that's like Hanamaru also th- thought that she didn't fit in the traditional like mold of what an idol is. And Ruby's yeah. like, yeah, look, she didn't. And like, she's a muse. She's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that, that was, uh, this episode leads to Hanamaru joining Aqua eventually. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about some trivia. Yeah. Uh, the end credits character for this time is Rin, obviously. Uh, this episode marks the second time Hanukkah says the sea, or Umida, which a confused Umi thinks she called her. The first one is in no upperclassmen allowed. The off vocal of Pua Pua O oh by Printemps is used during uh, the is used as background music during the fashion show. So again, another subunit song sneaked its way into the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rena struggles to become more feminine in order to wear the bride dress. This struggle was seen in her flashback in season one, episode number four. Uh, ironically, she is seen wearing a light green dress in Lily White promotions, which obviously makes sense since those are not necessarily tied to the story. Right. Uh, in the Love Wing Bell segment, a pinned notice paper seen behind Ellie is actually written console logs. <laughs> what? I guess. Uh, and then, of course, continuity notes, which we we, we talked about a little bit. Uh, Hanukkah unsuccessfully attempted to stop the rain on the weather app in Katori's phone again since Love Live once again. Her stand abilities are not as po- as potent in Okinawa as they are in Tokyo. Tragic. It's the way the the cookie crumbles sometimes. Next time, we will be discussing season two, episode number six, and it's gonna get a little spooky in here. Spooky. Spooky. As we discuss an episode called Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Time has no meaning anymore. So basically, if you wanted to say it's Halloween now, who's gonna stop you? It's Halloween all year. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what we'll be talking about next time. But for now, if you'd like more from us, go to SeasonalAmbercheckup.com or SAC.cool. where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Seasonal Amber Checkup and Seasonal Amber Checkup OVA. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you want more from Anne Lady, go to AnnLadyM.com. She's got columns and reviews. And you can follow us on Twitter, Twitter.com slash Anime Checkup. So next time, join us as we uh, we get very spooky and celebrate Halloween. Yay!